Hello viewers, welcome to my channel IITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And in today's video, I have brought uh, uh, analysis of uh, how a rainbow is formed. And this is the first time I've tried to bring some uh, studio effects and animation into my videos. I've worked hard on this one and I hope you uh, like, my, like my video. And uh, at the end of the video, please do uh, remember to comment how you liked uh, my effort on this one. So let me straight away get into the analysis. So before we understand the rainbow, we need to understand the effect of divergence of beam on uh, luminos luminosity of anything. Just imagine, suppose we have a divergent beam. So I've just taken two agarbatti sticks to uh, illustrate uh, what I uh, uh, illustrate what's the effect of divergence. See, suppose I have a torch and the beam is diverging. So what happens? Whatever is the light right now concentrated in a small area, as the beam goes further, the same amount of light gets uh, dispersed into a very uh, wide area. So what happens? So when we have a divergent beam, the intensity of the beam uh, it becomes uh, smaller and smaller as you go away. Uh, from this one okay uh, from the source uh, whereas if we have a parallel beam what will happen if you have a parallel beam then the intensity of the beam will remain same it will not uh, reduce as as the beam progresses further the intensity of the beam remains unchanged okay so that's why you see uh, many times uh, when uh, we have to do presentations we use a laser pointer so what's the uh, benefit of a laser pointer that even when you are away from the screen your laser pointer uh, still uh, makes a dot size uh, image of the laser beam right so because that beam is parallel so this if you have understood this then uh, uh, you'll be able to understand the rainbow formation very easily so to uh, make things more clear i'll uh, uh, take you to uh, an uh, animation uh, or rather you can say demonstration project it was a Wolfram demonstration project uh, which I have used in this video for uh, uh, illustrating what kind of refractions happen in a uh, raindrop by the way I'll be primarily discussing the primary rainbow there's also something called secondary rainbow which I might uh, briefly mention in my presentation so let's look at uh, how refraction uh, causes the rainbow okay so big okay so let me straight away get into the uh, this one uh, so let's see how the refraction leads to formation of the rainbow okay so here is my demonstration and uh, the red uh, beams that you are seeing here these red beams are uh, incident rays so different incident rays uh, we, i have plotted over here and then uh, the this is the same ray after refraction the green ones are the refracted rays so what happens these refracted rays they fall on the other surface of the uh, raindrop so the circular thing is the raindrop they fall on the other surface and this uh, surface causes partial reflection please remember many times students tell me that it's a, a supposed to be total internal reflection so i feel that the cause of that misconception is because uh, most of the textbooks won't show the refracted rays over here and so students think that it's total internal reflection rest assured it cannot be a tir because from here whatever is the angle you know you know that the angle that chord subtends at the center uh, uh, it will make equal angles with the normal i'll show you that in another scene uh, shortly so but uh, this there's a partial reflection happening over here and what is happening after partial reflection these rays they are uh, uh, incident on the uh, this uh, uh, again incident on the refracting surface of the sphere and uh, then uh, they are after uh, then uh, they again go refraction and this is what happens now uh, the crux of understanding the rainbow lies uh, here itself you, if you see look look very carefully at my mouse if you see this ray and this ray these two rays are divergent rays right similarly these two rays are divergent among themselves as you go along they're still divergent 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 but somewhere over here you see this ray and this ray they are almost parallel to each other right they have become almost parallel to each other and after this if you see the last ray and the second last ray instead of being divergent they are convergent so somewhere this divergence uh, is getting converted to convergence and that means what somewhere there the rays are going to be parallel as well okay so uh, when the rays uh, get parallel uh, when the rays are parallel you know that their intensity is not going to decline so when you're looking along this direction the intensity will be uh, unchanged even uh, several kilometers away if you see this raindrop the this this region of the raindrop will be luminous 
uh, with red color right because the red rays are parallel coming from here whereas if you look at this ray these rays are diverging and their intensity will decline to zero so i hope you understood understood why we are seeing the red color at a particular angle okay so if uh, because here it uh, the rays it's not that red rays are not present at other angles red rays are present uh, throughout this uh, all these black rays are basically red color light only but because there is so much divergence at other places and here there is convergence so somewhere the in between there are the rays are going parallel and that uh, that prevents the loss of intensity even as the rays are traveling uh, further so i hope you understood that so if that is clear then uh, i am uh, i will illustrate to you uh, uh, by the way i i also like to show you what what will happen suppose instead of uh, uh, the water drop we had let us say glass drop uh, glass drops instead of uh, water drops we had uh, rain made of glass drops so we can change the refractive index over here so right now here it is 1.333 that is 4 by 3 so instead of that i can try putting 1.5 so what will happen if it were the case of uh, glass so our ray diagram would change see this is the ray diagram for glass and i can continuously change the refractive index from here see if i change the refractive index this is very high 2 point something refractive index and you can see after this uh, refraction the rays are going upwards and i can uh, similarly reduce and you see if i reduce the refractive index to let us say 1 then these rays are going straight away and then it's still showing reflection over here it's not refracted please note that uh, this is the, this is showing some reflected rays and uh, uh, again let me again put it to 1.33 because uh, uh, our atmosphere has the rain made up of water so let me again go to 1.33 and uh, i have just shown the incident rays on the top half if i want i can also show the uh, in beam incident beam on the bottom half but then this diagram will become cluttered just for illustration i'll show you uh, how it looks like if i draw the complete ray diagram so bottom half rays also if i uh, include see this is this is what's happening so parallel rays are coming and there is high intensity uh, uh, on the top of the drop also along some direction and bottom also this angle is around 42 degrees so the, you see there will be very high intensity red beam coming uh, from the drop along these two directions so i hope uh, that settled for you and if that settled now uh, let's try to verify uh, whether our information is correct or not through this simulation so what I'll do, I'll measure this angle and I'll show you that this angle is indeed about 42 degrees. What I've done, I've uh, copied this uh, diagram into uh, my PDF annotator and then I'll be using the measure tool to measure the angle. So let's see that one. So uh, let's go to that. So, uh, okay. So now uh, let's look at this. Uh, so this is the, on the right side, I have shown the diagram from NCRT and this is the diagram from uh, Wolfram uh, demonstration project that I just now uh, 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 showed, plotted uh, and showed to you in the previous scene. Now, uh, what I'll do, I'll use the measure tool and uh, I'll show you that this angle. So what I've done, the place where the beams were getting, the, the rays were getting cluttered together, I have, uh, what I've done. I have extended this region uh, behind and I have drawn a parallel to the rays from here so that I can get the intersection point. And then I am going to show you that I am going to measure this angle between these two incident light and the final emergent light. So let me use the uh, measure tool. Uh, where do I have? Yeah. Mm, yeah, here is the measuring tool. I will measure the angle. So let me draw from here this line and uh, let's see see if you read uh, it's about 42.8 uh, degree now it's showing because i've not done things very accurately if i were to draw it uh, very accurately it would show, so it's now showing 42.6 degrees so almost you can see that there's about uh, 42 degree angle okay and uh, and the same thing ncrt also shows so what's the difference between the real ray diagram and the ray diagram that is normally plotted in the books so what we plot in the books is only actually uh, the most intense beam uh, that is shown in the textbooks. It's not that there's only one ray coming from uh, sun and uh, that's getting uh, split into two colors. There's so many rays, but this ray corresponds to the uh, uh, corresponds to the most intense direction of the uh, light. Okay, so it turns out that the red, red light is most intense at 42 degree angle 
and the uh, the indigo light you can say is most intense at around 40 40 degree angle so let's see uh, why does that happen that happens because the refractive index of uh, water is not constant for all wavelengths uh, it's it varies a little bit with wavelengths and that's why we see different angles of deviation for uh, different rays okay so let's see the uh, variation of uh, the uh, let's see variation of the uh this angle of deviation with respect to the wavelength through uh, another uh, animation uh, that i have taken from uh, uh, one javascript site uh, i'll mention the link in the description box later on so let's see so let's go to the fourth scene okay uh, yeah so uh, here uh, you can see here i have an option of for this slider i can slide this slider left and right and i can see the angle of deviation so here this is even more clear you can see the rays are coming incident rays and here you can see they, these rays are very divergent and then as you are coming here at the bottom they are becoming almost parallel and for red color at 42 degree so i have chosen the wavelength as 648 nanometer so at 648 nanometer this is uh, the uh, the at 42 degree angle the beams have become almost the rays have become almost parallel so and uh, here you can see on the right hand side there are so many uh, right hand side you can see that there are uh, just a sec i'll go to the main window uh, i'm not sure if you are able to see my mouse because i was moving my mouse on the studio window so uh, i hope now my mouse will be visible to you so here we have a controller for the wavelength so i can change the this wavelength you can see uh, so for blue light you can see it's about 40 de degree blue light and then uh, because our eye is not sensitive to uh, almost 400 nanometer becomes the range of visible so that's why it's showing black color here in the animation and uh, here we have around 42 degree uh, for red color okay and for uh, blue color it is around 40 degree okay so between these two uh, angles we see the entire rainbow so now which color we'll see on the top and which color we'll see at the bottom so if you see elevation of uh, the elevation of the blue color from horizontal is 40 degree right and elevation of the red color from the horizontal is how much elevation of the red color from horizontal is about 42 degree so that's why we'll see red color above so to, so to see red color we have to look at the look at an elevation of 42 degree whereas to uh, see the blue color we have to look at an elevation of around 40 degree so that's what is shown so here you can see on the right hand side so many raindrops are there and uh, and the light which is coming to the eye of the observer is not from the same drop so blue color is coming from some other uh, um, uh, drop and the red color is coming from some other drop and that's why uh, and uh, you are seeing a uh, spectrum so di at, at different different angles you are seeing different different colors over here and uh, uh, I to illustrate it even uh, in a more clear manner what I'll do I'll uh, uh, go to still uh, another window so let me change the scene and go to the next window and uh, okay so let me go to the next scene okay here uh, the things will be even more clear so what's happening why we are seeing the uh, semicircular shape of the rainbow so that should be clear from here see as far as uh, the from the perspective of uh, observer if you see so uh, this place is as good as uh, this place the entire circle so if you draw normal along the eyesight of the human being around that you can imagine a, a cone and uh, all the points on this cone are equally beautiful right they're equally symmetric so if i am getting uh, uh, 40 at uh, 42 degree angle here suppose there is some drop which is emitting some red light into the eye of the man so entire circle which is drawn at an elevation of 42 degree will give the same color light into the eyes of the man because of symmetry about the uh, normal uh, or you can say symmetry about the line joining the sun to the head of the person so there is perfect circular symmetry about this line and that's why you are seeing a circular rainbow uh, well uh, is it really circular rainbow uh, or is it semicircular rainbow so what you see is actually a semicircular rainbow but the thing is you see it as a semicircular rainbow because uh, uh, the other part of the rainbow is below the horizon it is eclipsed by the horizon so if earth were a point size earth you would be able to see the complete circular rainbow so i hope uh, that's clear and uh, uh, and we can also find the direction uh, in which direction we'll see the red circle uh, if you change the altitude of the sun you can see the uh, the relative position of the rainbow uh, also changes uh, we can see 
that rainbow can be observed at uh, uh, various uh, i mean the size of the rainbow uh, also changes uh, depending on how the sun is there so if you want the biggest uh, rainbow so sun should be near the horizon and that will lead to the biggest visible uh, rainbow all the size of the rainbow is same but then it will go below the horizon if the elevation of sun is too high you will not be able to see because it's a, it will look like a very small rainbow so i hope uh, you understood how the rainbow is formed and the entire physics behind uh, uh, rainbow formation and uh, hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through uh, whatsapp groups telegram groups discord servers or whatever medium you use for uh, networking with your friends for prepare uh, preparation of your je or olympiads and uh, uh, most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my video please do subscribe to uh, my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to bring out a new video every day and uh, uh, that's it for this video uh, and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you